Hey there, welcome to the second video in our three-part series about installing um, the Chime software using VirtualBox on a Windows computer. In part one, we installed VirtualBox, uh, which is a software that lets you run sort of a computer within your own computer. If you are starting here and you haven't done that yet, uh, you can go watch our first video. I'll make sure to put a link to it down in the description of this one. And if you want to skip ahead, say you've already done most of the stuff we talk about here, I'll also put a link to the, to the third video. So in this video, we're going to be downloading the Chime image from the website and getting it set up. If you go to chime.org, q-i-i-m-e.org, um, click on this Chime virtual box link. If you're coming right from the other video, you probably already have this open somewhere. Looking at these instructions, um, we've finished number one. Now it's time for number two. Download the 64-bit Chime virtual box, uh, which is over here in the resources page. Now I found this page a little confusing at first, uh, mostly because I didn't know what to look for. So I can tell you exactly where to go and you won't have to deal with that. The stuff up here um, is not what you're looking for. These are like 16S tools. Right now we want this, the latest Chime VirtualBox image. Uh, I'm going to right click it, save it as, I'm going to save it to my documents folder. If you have one of those unzipping tools like I do, I have WinZip, but there's plenty of them out there. Um, that should be the type of file that it's saying this is. It's a .gz file. In order to open it up after it's done downloading, you're going to have to unzip it. I'm not going to show this part in the tutorial. It's different for everyone. If you're downloading something like this to unzip a file, if, whether it's for this one or sometime in the future you want one of them, be very, very careful where you're actually downloading something from. The websites that host file unzippers are full of spam ads and pretty nasty viruses. Anyway, um, you are going to save this. Okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit. Um, I have saved that program to my computer and I've also unzipped it using my unzipping tool. If you are confused about how to get past that step, um, you can leave a comment and I can walk you through it. It's, uh, it's not super complicated and there's a lot of, there's just, everyone has their own way that they like to do that. So the way that I do it might not be the way that you want to. So I've unzipped that file, now I have it, it's a um, .vbi file now. Anyway, I have it downloaded into my documents folder. And um, I have another tip for you all actually, which is I've installed this, I've done this whole process on I think 18 computers now. The first time I downloaded it and unzipped it like normal, but all the times after that, I actually put the unzipped file onto an external hard drive and then use that to transfer it from computer to computer instead of downloading it every time just because it's such a big file. It's like 13 gigabytes unzipped. And it, that was just faster, honestly, for me at least with my internet connection. Um, so if you are planning on putting this on a bunch of computers at once, VirtualBox is small enough that you can probably download it on each one. If you uh, feel like it, there's not a huge time difference, but for the whole unzipping thing, it's just easier to <laughs> carry around the actual image file. So the next thing that we're going to do is um, go back to our VirtualBox manager here. This looks pretty blank, pretty boring, but it's not going to pretty soon. <laughs> Click this new button. This window might look a little bit different for you depending on what version of Windows you have. Um, but they all have the same fields in it and everything. You're going to put in the name of your machine. I actually already have a Chime machine on my computer, but I'm making another one for this tutorial, so I'm going to name this one Chime 2 over there. Um, and then I'm going to go down to type, press Linux, and what should come up here is Ubuntu 64-bit. Now apparently there's a pretty common problem that crops up here for people where they they see Linux, they see Ubuntu, but the only option they have is 32-bit. I've never run into this issue, but I think they have a tutorial on how to fix it on the Chime website. 
um, either you have the wrong version of VirtualBox because you might you might have downloaded like the 32-bit version of that, or um, there's something up with your computer, or your computer is just really old. If your computer is a 32-bit computer, um, I'm I'm not sure this whole process is gonna work for you. Sorry to tell you that now. Anyway, click Ubuntu 64-bit if it doesn't come up automatically, and press next. This memory size screen, um, I know sort of you have this automatic desire to just keep clicking next, but you need to make sure that the allotted um, RAM for this program is more than 768 megabytes. They say on the website that they need 1024 at least. Um, you know, I don't think there's I don't think there's any harm in putting a little more in there. And press next. Um, so here. It's asking if you want to make a new computer within a computer, or if you want to use an existing one. Well, we just downloaded an existing one. So you're going to click this third option down here, and this folder icon on the right. Choose a virtual hard disk file, and navigate to the one that you just downloaded. Mine is right here. It should be a red box if you installed VirtualBox correctly, and you know checked all those boxes about um, file extensions and stuff. I told you to, but you know, maybe you skipped that part. Now you press create. And look at that, it's created. Um, pretty straightforward. So um, this tells you some of the specs of your virtual machine. And if you wanna get it started, just press the start button. When you first start it for the very first time, you're not going to be able to make it super big. See, I can maximize this, but the screen is still pretty small. You get to fix that later, I promise. So this is all loaded now. This is your virtual machine. It's telling me that I need to update something. <laughs> it says there's 195 updates. Well, we're not going to do that right now. I'm in the middle of uh, recording a tutorial. That's very rude of you, computer. So this desktop has loaded. Um, you you've created the space. Now you have to install Chime inside of this piece of computer. So your screen should be looking something like this. Pretty blank. Pretty boring. Um, it's you know, it's a blank computer that they've made for you. The only thing on this is Chime. You're pretty much in the home stretch now, but I will warn you, we're about to do some command line stuff, so it's going to look a little more like like coding and not so much like pressing next buttons. So be mentally prepared for that. There's two more things I'm going to do in this video, and then the very last stuff I'm going to save for the third video. So I want you to click Devices up here on the left, this drop down menu, go to the very bottom and it says insert guest edition CD image. Basically they have like a CD in this fake computer and it's and it's asking if you want to install the things off of the CD. You do. Press run. Uh, basically on this computer we're logged in um, as someone who doesn't have the full permissions. So we're not logged in as an administrator on this computer or well, I guess we are but we we need to put in a password every time we try and install something. We're, this password is going to come up a lot, so maybe write it down. It's just the word chime in all lowercase letters. Uh, I'll narrate it for you. Q-I-I-M-E. That's the password. Press authenticate. Or, you know, enter is what I press. So basically, it's uh, loading the things off of the fake CD. Okay, when it says press return to close this window, press enter return or return to close the window um i love it when it gives you directions so this next stuff it does tell you on the chime website how to do this but for whatever reason i found it really hard to navigate um i think other people do too which is why a bunch of students asked me to make this tutorial for them so i'm just warning you i'm gonna walk you really step by step here I'm going to go under the assumption that you've never put anything in a command line terminal before, that this is completely new to you. 
If it's not, I mean, I'm sorry. You, you know, hopefully the sound of my voice is soothing or something. <laughs> so the next thing that you're going to do is click this picture of a CD over here. This is the CD you just installed. I'm going to drag this window over here. I would suggest having this in full screen instead of the tiny little computer box um, that it sets up for you automatically, especially now that we're going to be putting things into the terminal window. This black box is the terminal window. When you see this little tilde S, that means it's uh, waiting for you to put a command in. So this purple box is called the terminal. We're going to be doing a few things in it. It's not as scary as it looks. Actually, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to be doing one thing in it. It's called the sudo command. Now earlier you saw that pop-up that asked if you were the super user and asked for a password. The sudo command is pretty much the same as run as administrator in Windows. You know, you have that little shield icon and it's asking if you want to run as an administrator. That's the same thing that we're going to do here. Type in the letters S-U-D-O. So basically the way that this interface works is it's just typing. You can't even click around at all. <laughs> it's just typing. And the first thing you type in is the command. Sometimes you put in a few letters for clarifying the command. And then sometimes you put in like the name of a file. Your terminal is actually like inside of a folder. And I'll get more into this later. But basically in the same way as if you're navigating like this folder tree over here. Like if I were to click on this it would get me into that folder. You do a similar thing in command line, um, but you do it using code and not clicking around. Anyway, um, I found a neat trick that you can do. Um, after the sudo command, you have to put in whatever it is you want to run. We want to run this over here, vbox linux editions run. Now, I could either type in the entire file location of this or I can use the command line thing to navigate to this folder and then type in that name or here's a cool trick grab it with your mouse drag it into there wow look at that so I didn't have to do any of that I just I just dragged it and dropped it um, of course if you want to type it all in you're welcome to I uh, if you were watching this, you know, a few months from now, you might have a different edition here. Um, you might have different numbers. I know that the tutorial that exists on YouTube already, I tried to type in his exact numbers. It just wasn't working because we had different versions. You can't just press enter yet. You have to get rid of these little um, quotes, or I guess they're apostrophes, before and after the file name. You can use the left and right arrow keys to navigate. Um, so I just got rid of the apostrophes on either side of the file location, and I'm going to press enter. Now it's asking for the password. When I type in the password, the letters aren't going to show up. I guess it's a security thing. They don't even give you asterisks or anything. So I'm typing Q-I-I-M-E, enter. And now it's running. Okay, here we go. It looks like it's done chime at chime whatever tilde dollar sign <laughs> means that's that's done i'm gonna x out of this i'm gonna x out of this there's one more thing maybe you notice but there's two folders here on the desktop um actually older versions of chime have folders and a few files that are like readme files but this version just says two folders in the before you start folder um, it tells you, it's got a little text file that tells you a little bit about what version you have and how to install it. Basically, um, it's got more information than I'm telling you verbally right now. You may find it interesting. And the other folder is a shared folder. If you open it, there's nothing in it right now. That's because we haven't set it up yet. So you're going to want to shut down your VirtualBox computer, not your actual computer. Go to this little um, sun off sign symbol in the top right, press shut down. Are you sure? Yes, you're sure. Okay, so it's not running anymore. Right here it says Chime 2, that's mine, You're probably yours probably just says Chime, it is powered off. 
there's one more thing we're gonna do in this video I know it's getting a little long but like I said it's a long process and you're in the home stretch you are so close to being done scroll down in this uh, panel on the right and go to shared folders click the word shared folders so there shouldn't be any yet there shouldn't be anything here except for the word you know machine folders but there shouldn't be any folders set up yet if you do this before you install all the other time stuff sometimes it like breaks it it's really annoying you have to then delete it and redo it so I would I would not do this step before the stuff we just did so you are going to press this blue envelope button with a green cross on it adds new shared folder the folder path this can be whatever you want um, at NC State we have it set going to the desktop because it's mostly students doing classwork um, that are using the computers but if you're using this for your own like lab work and stuff I would make a dedicated folder basically what this does is I don't know if you noticed while you had your virtual box open but you don't have the same files in that as you do on your regular computer in fact right now the only way to get files there is to upload them to the internet open up the internet inside the virtual box and download them there well that's a pain that's why they have the shared folder tool basically it's like a little link between your computer and the virtual computer so I have this going to the desktop you know it, it doesn't really matter where it's going to but what does matter is the folder name this is very important get rid of whatever word is here already and type in capital S lowercase h a r e d underscore capital F o l d e r shared folder capital first letters with an underscore in between it's got to be exactly that spelling press OK and then press OK again it saved your settings it says you have a shared folder in order to check that the shared folder works start up your machine again I know it takes a little while um, to start it up and then close it again it's kind of annoying <laughs> while that's booting up I'm gonna show you something on my desktop so I have besides a few programs on my desktop I have this um, picture called untitled I made it just for you it says the word test image on it this is my test image this is to make sure that it actually works so if this shows up in the shared folder in um, our virtual box that means they're successfully linked okay so as this is opened you should notice something different do you know what it is if you look at the shared folder there's this little um, there's this little uh, lock symbol on it in a white square that should mean that it's successfully set up but we'll only know when we see my test image and look there it is double click on this image it says test image looks about right um, so now if I put things on my desktop outside of this they'll show up here and vice versa if I write something inside of this or have an image that I want to save um, or you know any other kind of file that I want to save to send to people uh, I can just put it in the shared folder um, sometimes it takes a while to load in between sometimes it takes so long that I've just restarted it I don't know if you're supposed to restart every time you move files in between if you want them to show up um, I haven't played around with this particular aspect that much but that's how you set it up and it's obviously a pretty useful tool okay this concludes the second video tutorial on using chime while well, installing it using VirtualBox thanks for watching and uh, make sure to tune in to the third video where I show you how to finish up the process. See ya.